it go? So today I'm going to get my mate from work to show me how to do a little bit of leather work. Stay tuned. Let's go make something. 16 and a quarter. And a, and a, and a quarter. Oh, shit. No, so that makes it... A, Eighth and a one, uh, eight inches and an eighth, and, a, and a, yeah, a half of a quartery bit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's one of them. That's for my American friends that are watching. <laughs> and you were, is that the 37 one? Yep, that's the 37. That gives the height from just above the elbow, elbow. to the peak of the shoulder. We can always trim the leather at the top because it's not going to be stitched across the top. Yeah. So what are we looking at? 23. See, he makes plans. I don't. Is this leather cost? Was it eight thousand New Zealand dollars? This cost you? <laughs> yeah, eight thousand American at that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, they are, that was a steel piece of leather, bro. Yeah, <laughs> it, it certainly was. Was it? That'd be at least half a hide, wouldn't it? Uh, yep, I'd say so. Half a hide for eighty-eight dollars, which is like that's a steal. Yeah, as we don't have any tanneries left, left in New, New Zealand. Zealand yeah. The the leather goes raw from the freezing works. That's the place where they kill cows. Yeah. <laughs> to Australia, where it gets turned into leather and then shipped back again. So there, that goes to there. Put in my arm. Yep. There's our mark. Now you can straighten your arm because now we can, because it will take a curve rather than a dead square. Yep. Right, and with your other hand, that's it. I would have struggled doing this on my own even if I knew what I was doing. Oh, don't worry, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. We cut half of the pattern. Now you see where those measurements we took upstairs appeared true at the time. Mm. If we had hacked into the leather... Yeah, we have been wasting leather. Wasting leather like you wouldn't believe. Is that leaving enough room for stitching? The, what we do is when we lay this on the leather, we mark... So that's where you want, say it was being a butt joint? Yeah. That would be fine? Yeah, that and would be now, fine for a butt joint. And now we want but we want to do seam the over, allowance. overlappy seam yep. allowance thingy. For, for this, if you go too small, then your stitching is likely to, likely to pull out the back. So, yeah, yeah. So yep. if you go there and we lay the stitching here, then this allows us to flip it inside out once it's sewn and beat the living bejeebas out of it with a hammer to flatten it out. Man, that's totally smaller than... Yep. So you can see the benefit in making patterns. Oh man, just to see, because you don't know how to measure. Yeah. Yeah. The point where we go, that's bloody wrong, and screw it up and start again. again. <laughs> right. Lovely. It, it might be a bit long on the inside. Well, what we can do is because we my arm folds. Yep. Well, what we'll do is once it's together in stone, cut a curve into it. Or we could take it off the inside if you want. Oh, okay. just, just you, you, you want to bend your arm. You want to actually be able to bend your. Yep. So it'll be a reverse curve to the centre. Yeah. About starting about there. carry this line and I put a little tiny dotted line where the final join will be because this is brown yeah I think I'm going to make it black yeah so we'll, it doesn't we'll matter dye it. and then we add it's already did <laughs> add our seam allowance on the outside 
having it this wide allows us to fold it back out of the way nice and flat if it was too tight you'd never get it to sit flat and it would be a really unsightly untidy bulge yeah so, so was that about 10 mil? Yeah, 20, something like 10, that. 10, 15 yeah. mil? Yeah. Well, this costume has not got any historical accuracies about yeah. it. We are striving to our greatest degree, degree to, make to make sure, sure it doesn't. doesn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A lot of people would leave that as it is, fuzzy. Doesn't matter here because that's going to be part of the scene. Up here, no leather worker worth his salt would leave that kind of gunge. It's just amateurish and untidy. Like us. Like us. Shh. Oh, right, right, right. What you can do is simply burn the fuzz off the back edge. If I lay it like that, we can show the fact that we can see the holes on the back as well as the holes on the front, and that the two sides hopefully line, line up. up. Hopefully, line up. Just say yeah. when. Ready? Ready? Yeah, we're already filming. Are you? Okay, then I'll start. I'll start blaring. Light. Camera. Camera. Action. And what's my motivation <laughs> for this scene? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay, leather's all cut out, ready to put together. We've put a series of holes at even spaces. The important part is start at the same point up from the bottom that way everything will follow up the spaces will all be the same and you can see the holes from the back as well as the front it's important to be able to see them at the back because you're going to be working from the back and you don't want to be fumbling around trying to match up holes and trying to find holes the device for the stitching is an auto awl what we have in the base of it inside here is a spool of thread comes out wraps around here this allows you to hold back the thread when you're tightening up otherwise you're pulling on the thread at this end and it's just going to keep coming through until you run out you want to be able to stop the thread from pulling through travels up through the center through a groove runs up a groove in the side of the needle now anyone who's ever used a sewing machine will be familiar with this sort of technique this is a giant manual sewing machine needle effectively the important thing when stitching is to have the groove running in the direction you're stitching. I find it easier to stitch away from myself. Trying to stitch like this is really awkward. For me it's easier to run up there this way. To start, make sure you've got enough sticking out that you've got plenty to grab onto. Find your first hole on this side. Go through, find your second hole on the, your first hole rather on the other side, and you go right through. And you'll notice as you pull back, keeping the groove in the direction you're going in, a loop will develop on the back. The importance of that loop will become apparent when we start stitching. What you do, you pull that through and bring your needle out. Then you pull enough thread through for the whole run of your stitching plus a bit extra to play with at the end and also to account for the fact that the thread goes in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out so the thread you'll actually use will be longer than that distance. And, and, and you tie off. And, and you tie off. So you've got plenty at the end to play with. I might pull a little bit more through. If I was doing the same length over and over and over again, I would very quickly know how much extra I needed. So, here we are. You'll notice this stuff? This is wax. This is wax linen thread. Don't, if you can find it, use this. Don't use synthetic threads because they will cut the leather eventually. 
So we pull back, attempt to find the second hole, which I've go through, go and through the next and one on the other side. And you've still got the thread facing forward. Yep, facing the direction you're running in. Yep. Push it through. Now this is where that loop comes into play. Pull back, and there's the loop. That's important. You take the end of your thread that you've pulled through, and you go from the underside through. Always go from the same direction. I find going from the underside a lot easier. Grab a good hold of your thread and your leather and pull back. Now you don't want to pull it back so that the thread pops all the way out the other side and you don't want to leave it sitting on that side. So on this device has this little knob here which you can hold against and that allows you to tug and tighten off that thread, that stitch position it nicely bedded inside the leather without just pulling heaps of thread out. As I said, anyone who's ever used a sewing machine will know, realize that this is exactly the same way a sewing machine works. Pull back, get your end, so to speak, grab, lock off your thread there we go get that knot in the middle the waxing makes it move a bit better allows it to lock and also because this is an actual fiber linen the wax will help prevent it from rotting I think I've got it sussed. No, I haven't. My eyes are <laughs> not right now. Now my eyes are have gone out of focus. I'm gonna borrow my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so it's making sure that's facing towards where I want to go. Down the down the range. And then line me holes up. Where's my second hole gone? Is that it there? That must be it. Right, yeah, as long as the leather doesn't appear to bunch up, it's good enough. Push it all the way through, and then and there's me loop. Yep, shit. That's my eyes playing up. Go around, hold on to it, and then. Oops. Cool. Looking good. Got to keep me one of these tools. So unfortunately, I don't think they're up to sticking wood together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mind you, <laughs> give it a try. Give me yeah, enough thread. Yeah. Give me a big enough hammer. Yeah. One doozy of a hole punch. There's a guy called, you might like, his, um, his YouTube channel is called The Red Smith. He right. does a lot of leather work yeah. as well. And I've watched him and I was like, he uses different techniques. And all that. Oh, but this is no two of the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm self-taught. You know, if I'd had yeah. a master leathersmith, I'd probably use a recognised technique. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Now there will be people out there who will be horrified a bit with what I'm about to do because it's probably not textbook, but uh, remember I'm self-taught. Now what we have here is a rather unsightly bulky lump of leather. You could either trim it off, but then you're risking getting close to your stitching line and it pulling through. What I find works quite nicely is if you simply soak the leather in good hot, but not boiling, water, and then 
you can take a piece of wood, clamp it down over the top and leave it to dry of its own accord. So heaps and heaps of water, get it dribbling and running with the stuff. And you mainly did under here, didn't you? Yep. Get it all nice and wet, get the whole thing. As I said, there will be people out there who've done this a lot longer than I have who will say that's not how to do it. But the results I've achieved have been quite good. This is just another way of doing it. I mean, yeah. I get sick of people that say that that's not how you do it. Why not? It worked for me. And I give it a bash, do I? Yep. I'll get my assistant. Try that. That feels better. Yeah. Right over the seam so it keeps it level rather than rocks off the side of the seam. I have one. Anyway, Martin, thank you very much for showing me how to do that. It's all right, I've got a free feed out of it. <laughs> and he's paying for it. Paying. So if we stuff it up, hey, no Doesn't loss it? to me. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, well, I've never done it before, so. And it's all down to this little beastie. That little thing there. Yeah. Get one. If you intend to do any mm. leather work, get one of these or something that does the same job. Yeah. Nice, it's staying down there quite nicely now. That's cool. Cool. Anyway, it's a lot easier than I thought it was going to be, so. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And remember to click the notification bell icon. That way, you'll be notified when I upload a new video. You can find us on most social media, including Google+, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, and Instagram. Please also consider supporting me on Patreon. See you next time. Don't forget to go and make something.